right where you are in your homes, on your job. If you be in the hospital, come on, just begin to declare the name of the Lord great. Come on, give him the fruit of your lips. Come on, the scripture tells us to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise, to be thankful and to bless his name. So come on, right now, lift your hands without wrath or doubt. Come on and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Father, right now, we bless you, we honor you, we magnify you, God. We give you glory, God. We lift you, oh God, for there's nobody like you in all the earth, Father. Father, right now, God, as we stand in the gap, hallelujah, for our family, for our homes, for our community, for our city, for our state, hallelujah, for our country, God. Right now, we thank you, oh God, for your glory, God. We thank you, oh God, that you're omnipresent, God. We thank you that you are with us, for you are a present help in the time of trouble. So we thank you now, oh God, that you are the good shepherd. And because you are our shepherd, oh God, we thank you that we shall not want, God. So God, we magnify you and we give you glory, oh God, because everything is moving by the power of God. God, we thank you that you sent your word to heal their diseases. So, Father, right now, God, we declare healing in the nation, God. We declare deliverance in the nation, God. We declare breakthrough in the nation, God. We give you glory, God, and we thank you, oh God, that you're shifting us into a new place, oh God. You're shifting us into a new dimension, and we thank you, oh God, for your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding, God. Even what seems to be confusion, God. We thank you for the peace that surpasses all understanding, God. And we thank you now, God. We thank you, oh God, for our leaders, oh God. Our pastors, oh God. We thank you for our bishop, God. We thank you, oh God, for the word that you're getting ready to release before your people, oh God. So we ask you, God, to prepare us, oh God, for a worship encounter. We lay aside every weight and every sin that has so easily beset us, oh God. So right now, God, we access David, God, to create in us a clean heart and renew the right spirit, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you that you have positioned us for such a time as this to worship you, to magnify you, to give you glory, God. We honor you, God, in the name of Jesus, for we're declaring that this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, Father, we thank you today oh God in the name of Jesus that you are a great provider God you're providing you're making ways out of no ways oh God in the name of Jesus you are the God of provision and we bless you now we give you glory we don't wait until the battle is over but we shout now with the voice of triumph we thank you oh God that you have given us the victory oh God we give you glory in advance for the release, oh God. And we thank you, oh God, for a fresh anointing. We thank you, oh God, for a fresh wind, God. We thank you, oh God, for the outpour of your spirit. We thank you, God, for the outpour of your power. We thank you, God, for the outpour of your anointing, God. Do a new work in us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, for this is just the beginning. And we're declaring today that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard neither has it entered into the hearts of men that which you have in store for your people God as we buckle down in prayer we ask oh God that you shift our way of thinking in the name of Jesus that we'll have an ear to hear what the spirit is saying to the church and God we thank you oh God that we won't only be hearers but we'll be doers we thank you oh God that you're activating a greater work in us oh God and you're strengthening us in power God you're giving us a renewed mind through your word God and we bless you now and we give you glory we don't wait until the battle is over but we're declaring victory right now in the name of Jesus and we thank you in advance oh God for the harvest of souls we thank you oh God for revival in the nation you told us in your word to seek ye first the kingdom of God and your righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto you and we give you glory and we thank you oh God for the release now in the name of Jesus God we give you glory God that you're counting
upon us into a new place, God, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God, and we thank you right now that the same power that's demonstrated in this house will be demonstrated in the lives of your people. And we bless you and give you glory. It's in Jesus' name. And let the people of God say amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's seal that prayer with an amen. Let's seal that prayer with a thank you, Jesus. Let's seal that prayer with the Lord. We love you. Let's seal that prayer with God. We thank you. And God, we honor you because you're wonderful. Hallelujah. We're going to have an amazing time in the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. We welcome you into our experience today. And we ask you that you will continue to join in with us as we press a little harder this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, right where you are.
God, we thank you for our opportunity to worship you. God, and we take this moment and we declare, God, that we will not be silent. God, but we will always, in good times and bad times, in happy times and in sad times, we will always worship you. God, we thank you today and we bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All nations and all of our viewing and streaming friends and family, this is a time where we prepare to go further. Everybody's not a singer and everybody, I understand that so many are not in the sanctuary, but this is an opportunity where we can all give and sow into the house of the Lord on today. This is where we all bring our, our sacrifice to God and say, God, here is what you told me to give. And so I come with a cheerful heart because we know that God loves a cheerful giver. So on today, hallelujah, there's so many ways that you can give. And we want to extend those ways to you. There is someone here that will be on the grounds to where you can come and sow your seed if you need to come and make it and, and sow that seed in person. But you also have the option to text to give. And that number is 205-632-1129. Text the word give to that number and follow the prompts. And I promise you, you will be blessed by your giving. God says he would give it back to us, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. He said that men would give unto your bosom. And so we're so grateful to God because he is a man of his word. Hallelujah. He never fails. Hallelujah. Whatever he says he's going to do, he does just that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And on today, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to prepare to do our giving confession. Hallelujah. I know all nations, you're so used to it, and I know many of you know it, and I'm so grateful that you do. So we're going to say it together right there, even in your living room, in your den, wherever you may be. Let's say our giving confession. This seed is not a debt that I owe, but a seed that I sow. I am a cheerful giver. I do not give grudgingly. My seed is being sown into good ground and will provide a bountiful harvest for me. Because I chose to sow this seed, my entire house is being blessed. Because of this seed, I shall not lack in anything, spiritually, mentally, physically, or financially. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we take this seed, oh God. God, we know that there's times of plenty and there are times of lack. But you said, God, as long as the earth remain, God, there will always be seed time and harvest. God, so we take you at your word, oh God. No matter what the circumstances around us may say, oh God. God, you are not a man that you should lie, oh God. But everything, God, that you've promised us, God, you've got to make good on it, oh God. You said, God, that heaven and earth would pass away, God, but your word would stand, God. So we as your people, God, come sowing our seed today, oh God, because we know, God, that your word will stand, oh God. So God, we take this seed, God, and we place it in good ground, God. God, we ask, God, that you would turn unto us, God, a hundredfold harvest, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, send miracle money, God. Send healings to our body, God. Go into the hospitals, God, into the nursing homes, oh God, and send your healing virtue right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, everything that concerns us God concerns you oh God for you are our father God and we thank you today God we magnify you we glorify you and we call these things done it's right now in Jesus mighty name we do pray amen and thank God come on bless God for your giving on today in Jesus name hallelujah As long as I am breathing, I will always worship you, and I will not be I will, I will always. As long as I am breathing, I am breathing, I will always worship you. 
somebody where you are just begin to bless the name of Jesus begin to lift him up begin to magnify his name begin to glorify him wherever you are lift him up and let him know how much you love him and how much you appreciate him in Jesus name God bless you God bless you today I'm so excited to come to you uh, in your homes with the word of God we're yet here on another grand Sunday morning and uh, every church does it slightly different but uh, ANC has prided ourselves in coming to you live to give you that feel that you need to feel connected and be in the house of the Lord and I want to say to all of the listeners this morning that it won't be long and we'll be able to come back together as a conglomerate body of believers uh, to lift up the name of Jesus and I'm so excited today to share the word of the Lord with you. Our scripture text this morning is found in Joshua chapter number one and verse number eight. As you turn there, I want to just remind everybody that uh, we will be praying Monday through Friday this week. This will be our last week praying every day. And after this week, we'll go to two days a week. But we want you to join us live on Facebook at uh, 6 a.m. or the phone line. And you can get the information from our Facebook page. Also, we have been blessed to be able to minister to the community each and every day during the week, Monday through Friday. We're feeding 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, last week, we were able to serve over 2,500 meals to the community, and we give God the glory for everything that he is doing. He's a wonderful Savior. Hallelujah. Always remember Jesus, Jesus. Always remember, oh Jesus, Jesus. Always keep him on your mind. Will you lift your hands half mass wherever you are and we'll sing it together now. Always remember, say Jesus, Jesus. God bless you today. Joshua 1 and 8, the Bible says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have, somebody say, good success. So far, the scriptures let me just get into the word of the Lord this morning. I am just enamored by this text because we're going to talk about today the importance of the word. The importance of the word. It is a known fact that we engage our lives by way of the information that we have received over the years. Our hopes, dreams, ambitions, even our behavior is a direct result of a compilation of different types of information that we have ascertained and digested. How we think is determined by what we consistently 
digest in terms of information. This information is seeded into us through various life portals. We ascertain knowledge mainly by way of our five senses. And the two main senses that determine a lot of who we become in life are the seeing and the hearing. The seeing and the hearing. What we watch, what we read, who we surround ourselves with, and what we listen to on a consistent basis will determine the trajectory of our lives. We are creatures of change and evolution. And the challenge of this is that we can only become what we expose ourselves to. It is impossible for anyone to become that for which they have not seen or heard. We can even aspire to become a certain way. But if we do not go through the process of evolving our thinking through what we see and hear, this type of evolution will not take place. These two factors in life determine how we think and what we say. How we think significantly impacts what we say. And then what we say will determine what we see. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, verse number 6 through 7, Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. For as he thinketh, in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. I want to look at Luke chapter 6, verse number 45. The Bible says, a good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. For of, watch this, the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. Can't we see this dichotomy, the heart and the mouth and its connectivity and how they, they are intertwinedly connected. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to work on the heart. We've got to work on the mouth. And if we work on the heart, then the mouth will benefit because uh, the mouth is connected to the heart. And it follows the directions of the heart. And this is important because my mouth will determine my trajectory. So now we are talking about the importance of the word of God. This is a very exciting subject for me because during this time of quarantine, God is teaching us as a conglomerate body of believers that it's time to get back in the word. It's time to get back in the word. We're at home now. We have more time now. And it's time for us to make first things first. Look at uh, Proverbs 18 and 21. The Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Listen, the, the answer to the pandemic is in the mouth of the believer. Oh, Jesus. The answer to the pandemic is in the mouth of the believer. If we can get enough believers on board to confess that the storm is passing over, the storm won't have a choice. It doesn't matter what the scientists say. It doesn't matter what the medical professionals are saying. It doesn't matter what the president or the government officials are saying. Hallelujah. Our world will be framed by our words. And it's only through the mouth of the believer that this pandemic will be halted and sent away. Death and life. Death and life 
are in the power of the tongue. So I want to ask you today, what is your tongue speaking? What is your tongue speaking? Are we acting confused like we don't know what our God can do? Are we confessing what the media is confessing? What are we saying? Let me tell you, what will determine what we will say is our understanding of the importance of the word. So somebody ought to confess, I got to get back in my Bible. I've got to get back in my Bible. I've got to pick it up. I've got to dust it off. I've got to read it so it can get in my heart, so it can come out of my mouth. Now, I want to look at Joshua 1. Because here, Joshua 1 is the introduction of a new regime, an introduction of a new administration in Israel. Joshua, Joshua 1 is a whole paradigm shift. The book of Deuteronomy precedes the book of Joshua. And Deuteronomy is a book where Moses is giving his last instructions to the children of Israel. It is a book of reminding. It is wrote at the end of the wilderness. <laughs> they get to the Jordan River. They're getting ready to cross over. Moses cannot go with them because God says his season is up. So Moses reminds them not to forget God. He also reminds them of how good God had been to them in the wilderness. He also gave them revelation after the situation. Hallelujah. Sometimes God will tell you why after you go through the what. He tells them in Deuteronomy chapter 8, you shall remember the Lord thy God who brought you through the wilderness these 40 years. Watch this. To humble you and to prove you so that you would know what was in your heart. You were going through it. You didn't know why. But now let me tell you why. God was bringing you low and God was proving to you what was in you because ladies and gentlemen when you're in the wilderness you will find out the stuff that's in you that ain't right and you will find out the stuff that's in you that is good bad situations will reveal all of you and so now we've come through Deuteronomy Moses has died. Moses has died. And, 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 and the Bible says God buried him. God buried him in the mount. And now Joshua is grieving. And God talks to Joshua in chapter 1. And he tells Joshua, get up. Stop grieving. Stop mourning. You have an assignment. And your job is take these people over the Jordan into the promised land. And so he begins to talk to Joshua about his tenure. And he tells Joshua, you're going to be successful, but this is how you're going to be successful. You cannot have success your way. I need to tell seven people that this morning. You cannot have success your way. Notice here in verse number eight. He begins to talk to Joshua about success. He doesn't tell Joshua anything about his education. He doesn't talk to him about how much he works out. He doesn't talk to him about his swag. He doesn't talk to him about things that we think in our carnal understanding will produce or render success. He says, Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth oh God but thou shalt meditate therein day and night can I talk to you about the word of God number one the word must be in my mouth he says this book of the law this book of the law what book of the law the law that Moses got on Mount Sinai when he left the camp for 40 days and 40 nights, he went up on a mountain to get instructions from God. The Bible says he had no food or drink. And he fasted, he prayed, he met with God. And he came back with something that we call the Ten Commandments. 
Y'all remember Charleston Heston? I don't have time to get into that. But uh, the Ten Commandments, Moses came down off the mountain with the book of the law. He said, the same law that was given to your predecessor, don't let it depart out of thy mouth. As we explore the importance of the word, we must discover how imperative it is that we allow the word to monitor what we say when God speaks to Joshua about this book of the law he is referring to his words that Moses had written down which God's people were to live by God was not saying to Joshua that he was to walk around all day quoting the word but he was saying to him that he was to speak the word constantly and let the word determine what came out of his mouth. In other words, even when I'm not quoting the word, the word is the governor for my confession. In essence, God was saying to Joshua, what you speak and how you speak should be determined by my word. It is God's word that should determine the texture of our confessions and our conversations. When God's word doesn't depart out of our mouth, even when we are not having a spiritual conversation, his word keeps us in alignment with what is feasible and acceptable. When the word of God is in our mouths, it cancels death and releases life. Somebody ought to shout, I speak life. It kills negativity and gives life to hope and expectation. We must understand that how we speak is determined by who we are associated with. What does Isaiah say in Isaiah 6 and 5? Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone. Why? Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. You ought to ask somebody who you've been hanging with. Because who you have been hanging with will determine how you speak. The Bible says that Isaiah, he, he said, woe is me. I got a talking problem. I got a speech problem. I have unclean lips I cuss too much I complain too much I criticize too much I gossip too much I have a filthy tongue a perverse tongue and my body always lines up with my tongue because according to James the Bible says that the tongue setteth on fire the very course of nature I talk about it and then I be about it I talk about it and then I be about it it. And I've got to learn how to stop hanging with people that pervert my language. So the truth of the matter is that when our speaking upgrades, our circle upgrade. Listen, you ain't got to block nobody today. Sometimes we tell you to do that, but the Lord told me to tell you, you ain't got to block nobody today. Just change how you speak. And the people that don't like positivity, they'll block you. Oh, God. Some people, some of y'all talk about, I'm getting ready to disconnect, baby. I'm about to disconnect from everybody. God says you ain't got to disconnect from nobody. When you switch up and you change the way you speak, people that don't like good stuff, people that don't like God stuff, people that don't like hopes and dreams, people that don't like vision, they will disconnect themselves from you. When you learn how to speak, there are some people that you won't have to get rid of, but they will voluntarily walk out of your life. Uh-oh, the lights just went off. Now you know why they're not responding to your text messages. Because you're no longer being messy with them. Now you know why they won't answer your phone calls. Because now when they call you, they don't get junk. They get a word from God. And they don't want to hear that. They want to hear something messy. They don't want to be around that. But ain't, aren't you glad that people will separate themselves from you when you're doing good? 
He said, this book of the law will not depart out of thy mouth. But, he, but notice here in verse number 8. Let's go back to it. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Number two, the word must be in my mind. You ought to tell somebody the word must be in my mind. He says, but thou shalt meditate therein. Thou shalt meditate therein. Day and night. We must understand that God's word is not just to be simply read but it should be meditated on and the word meditate means to ponder and the word ponder means to consider something deeply thoroughly in order for God's word to be digested into the core of our minds we must spend time reading it and thinking on it and this requires seeking God in prayer for the understanding. We must be intentional about grasping the word with our minds. That is meditation. Why? Because our lives depend on it, literally. In order for our minds to be permeated by the word of God, we must have scheduled times during the day and night that we have allotted for our time with God. It is completely, ladies and gentlemen, ludicrous for a person to think that they can grow in the things of God without making time for his word. In order to know him, we must know his word because his word is who he is. Oh, there's an elephant in the room. What is the elephant in the room? Preacher, bishop, I don't have time to read the word. Well, let me ask you something. The Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. In other words, uh, the chicken is my natural food, but the word is my spiritual food. Let me ask you something. I don't care how busy you are. Do you make time to eat? I don't care. You could have X, Y, and Z going on. Your little truck will be parked in McDonald's drive through Because you're going to prioritize your physical man. What's wrong with us when we don't take time to get something in the word and we think we're going to have some spiritual strength? No wonder we can't pass no test in temptation. No wonder we're so uh, quick to fly off at the handle and cuss people out. No wonder we have a short fuse. No wonder we feel defeated every time we're up against a mountain and we got a test and we start throwing up our hands like God ain't going to come through. The reason why we don't have no courage and we don't have any faith is because we don't make time for spiritual food. But you got to see your spiritual food the same way you see your natural food, but of a higher importance. Many of us, we won't go a day without eating, let alone an hour. You mean tell me you eat a full course of breakfast and you got the nerves to eat a snack in 30 minutes? That's hypocritical. It's hypocritical because... You're prioritizing your natural man, but you won't even get a snack out of the word. God is saying he's bringing us back to order. If the church is going to have power, if the church is going to have victory, if the church is going to have spiritual stamina, we're going to have to get back in the word. You can't just rely on me to feed you. You got to feed yourself. Thank God for your spiritual leaders. Thank God for your covering. But you got to have some personal initiative in your spiritual life. He said, he, you got to meditate on it day and night. You got to think on it. In order for me to think on it, I got to read it. I got to read it. Notice this now. We got to understand that if I keep the word on my mind, watch this, I will keep peace in my heart. The Bible says in Isaiah 26 and 3, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee 
because he trusteth in thee. Watch this. I'll have peace when I have a mind that stayed on him. But my mind stayed on him is a voluntary action. In other words, God does not uh, take my mind and hold it hostage. He does not take over my mind. I have to be intentional about giving him my thoughts and I do it by meditating on the word so here we see that in this scripture in the C clause it says because he trusteth in thee in other words I don't read my bible and secondarily I am suggesting I don't trust God that's why I don't spend time in his word the more I trust him is the more I'll seek him and the more I'll prioritize him and the more I'll read about him. And that way I can walk in perfect peace and my peace is not situational or circumstantial. I operate in the revelation of what God has given me out of his word. Talk woods. And so uh, in the C clause, he says, for then, hallelujah, uh, I want to go to the C clause where it says, that thou mayest observe, there it is, to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. I'm closing when I say this. A word in my mind and mouth eventually gets in my movements. It is of a truth, ladies and gentlemen, that all of our actions are a direct result of what's in our minds and our mouth. What we do will determine, will be determined rather, by what we think and what we say. And I, I want to pause here parenthetically to remind you that your text messages are just as strong as your words that are spoken. Ooh, talk words. The Holy Ghost just gave me fresh download. The Lord says anything that you send out by way of communication represents uh, what you are confessing. So now you got to even watch what you text. Because your texting can be hindering your verbal confession. Confession. My God, my text messages need to come into alignment with my verbal confessions. Talk words. And so I need you to understand this. We then begin, ladies and gentlemen, in the text, God was teaching Joshua that meditating on the word leads to moving in the word. It starts with meditation. Uh, it goes to confession. And then it ends with movement. The word is written. The word is spoken. And then the word is made flesh. In the beginning, John 1 and 1, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then in verse number 14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Let me ask you a question. What kind of glory is other people seeing on your life? It ought to be the Word being made flesh, but but in order for that to happen the word has to be with you and then it has to become you and once the word is becomes you it is made flesh and you begin to live out that word that was with you but it's got to get with you first hallelujah we then begin to understand ladies and gentlemen that much of our prosperity and success is on us and not on God I'm closing the revelation is that if we protect and practice the word, prosperity and promotion is automatic. We don't have to pray for money when we have the right movements. Money will come to us when we follow the word with our lifestyle. Prosperity is automatic. It is impossible, ladies and gentlemen, for me to speak the word, meditate on the word, and it not affect how I maneuver throughout life. There are too many people that feel that the word should line up with their lives instead of their lives lining up 
with a word. Can I suggest to 70 people, and I'm going home, God never has to agree with us. But we must agree with God. This ain't Burger King, baby. We can't have it our way. We're going to have to come into agreement with God. I'm closing. Notice he says in the sea clause that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. I'm going to do what's written. And when I do it, watch what he says. For then thou shalt make Thy way prosperous. How many of you really want to prosper? When you prosper, that means everything that you touch turns into gold. That When you prosper, that means that you've got favor on the left. And you've got blessings on the right. When you prosper, he'll keep you from all evil. From all evil danger when you prosper that means wealth and riches will be in your house when you prosper it will be something in your swag that when you walk in a room people will know that you are somebody when you prosper my god you'll drive well you'll live well hallelujah even your relationship will be fruitful when you prosper that will be something special on you uh, that is not on other people when you prosper you can't hide prosperity it shines in fact prosperity will tell on you you cannot even have on name brand clothes uh, and it'll still be something about you that says you are somebody significant I need you to understand he says you shall make your own way prosperous when you stay in the world Word. And then notice he says, and then thou shalt have, look at the scripture, good success. Look at the writer, look at God himself being facetiously intentional, giving us the distinction between bad success and good success. See, let me tell you something. Just because you have money, it doesn't mean that you're successful. Because you can sell dope and get some money. Hallelujah. And sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, sinners will look like the saints in productivity. But the issue is what they gather will not last. But when you have good success, you can be proud of what you produce because you did it obeying God. Hallelujah. You ought to shine. I want to get it the right way. Huh? Hallelujah. I'm not going to step on nobody to get ahead. I'm not going to have to sleep with nobody to get ahead. I'm not going to have to sell nothing illegal or make any wrong moves. I'm just going to walk in his word and let him dump success on my life. And you may get it before I do. But when I get where you got, I'm going to stay there and you're going to end up losing it all because you didn't get it the right way. I I need to tell seven people when you get it right you don't have to worry about losing it so when you honor God's word he will honor you somebody began to lift your hands somebody began to confess to God say Lord your word is important to me Come on, let's begin to confess to the Lord. Say, Lord, I recommit to prioritizing your word. I'm going to get in your word. I'm going to meditate on it day and night. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. I'm not going to put Facebook before your word. I'm not going to put Instagram before your word. I'm not going to put my love life before your word. I'm not going to put anything, my career, I'm not putting it before your word. Because I know if I stay in your word, I will make my way prosperous and I will have good success. Right now as we worship, as we worship, there may be somebody watching us live today in this amazing 
virtual service and you're saying I have not given my life to the word I know about the word I've heard about the word that's why I'm on this live feed but I haven't conditioned and positioned myself to experience the word working in my life and so today the first thing I want to do is surrender my life to God I want to give my life to Jesus I want to be saved I want to walk upright. I want to talk right. I don't want to be like the man that's in the world that does his own thing. But I want to be right with God. I want to know that I'm in his will. And then I want to commit my life to studying and reading the word so I can be more like Jesus. Listen, I want you here. If you want to be saved, I want you to type in our group. Type the word salvation. Type the word salvation type the word salvation I want you to type the word salvation listen if you're in the group and you don't have a church home a place where you're covered a place where where God where you can be fed and plant your feet and be a part of a ministry I want to give you the option today to join this great church all nations church I would love to serve you as your pastor and feed you every week the word of God and pray for you and cover you and love on you this is a wonderful church to be a part of I want to offer you right now membership if you would like to be a member of this church I want you to type in the group the word membership type the word membership in the name of Jesus and we will have staff that will be in contact with you to help you go through the process of becoming a member we want you to be a part of this men of this ministry and finally if you're on this live feed today you've been touched by the word and in your mind you're saying Lord I got some things going on in my life that I need prayer I need somebody to agree with me I need somebody to cover me in prayer I need special prayer I want you to type in the group the words special request the word special request or type whatever your request is if you want it to be made known you can put it in the group whatever that request is if it's for your family if it's for your finances if it's for your spiritual growth or if you're just saying I want to do better in my spiritual life I want to get in the Word of God either category I want to offer it to you now in the name of Jesus hallelujah right now I believe that somebody's joining the ministry I believe that somebody's getting saved right now I believe that people are being covered in prayer hallelujah hallelujah I believe right now needs are being met souls are being saved lives are being changed bodies are being healed yokes are being destroyed I believe that strength is coming that glory is coming that victory is coming I believe that God is moving I believe that God is moving us in worship today and we're gonna let you go today but we want you to know that God is giving us an opportunity during this pandemic to deepen ourselves in his word his word is important his word is very important and we've got to get back in it and let him work on us in Jesus name will you pray with me father I thank you for all that you're doing 
in this place. I thank you for the souls that are coming to you. I thank you for the lives that are being changed. I thank you for the people who are joining the ministry. I thank you that you're growing us right now in your word. Open up our understanding that we may serve you, that we may please you in every dimension of our lives. We love you today. We give you glory. Now give us victory for the rest of this day and the rest of this week. We thank you that you're moving this crisis out of our land. We thank you that you're moving this pandemic out of our land. We thank you, God, that you're stopping the death angel and lives are being saved even now in Jesus name we love you and we call it done in Jesus name we pray amen listen join us this place Wednesday night at 6 50 p.m. we'll be looking for you in our Wednesday night access service God bless you and God keep you it's my prayer God bless you